Hi, this is Brian with King Grizzly, and today let's talk a little bit about CSS and Elementor. So the Elementor page builder is great, partially because you don't have to write a lot of CSS in theory, right? Like I can click on this headline and click on the style tab. Normally it's on content by default, but if I click style, go to typography, click on that little pencil, and I can, I can adjust this however I need, right? Cool. And I can do that for everything. Click on it, go to style, go to typography. Uh, what we start to run into issues is when you get you know, a site that's more than a few pages and you want to make changes. Uh, so let's say I've got a site that has 50 pages and every page might have multiple headlines. Well, what if I decide or a marketing manager decides you know, that it's time to make all the headlines green? Well, that's going to be a hassle going back through every single page. It's doable on most sites, um, but it's not very efficient, right? You know, having to go through and set um, the styling. Now, Elementor does have some sort of global type defaults, like a like a theme. Now, depending on what theme you're using, sometimes themes can set this for you. Um, and but like out of the box, default fonts for Elementor. I believe these are set to whatever our site is on, but. You got some controls, right? So I can set some basics, what I want the fonts to be. I got that by clicking on this hamburger up here. Default fonts, default colors, color picker. It would be nice, you know, maybe if Elementor rolled out a little better, global styling controls for things like type. We use the Elementor Hello theme, which is just real bare bones because the point of Elementor is you don't necessarily need a theme because you can use Elementor to build your theme. And we, you know that we can go through that in other videos. How do you actually build your headings and footers? But anyway, let's talk about CSS um, and a few ways to approach it. The first and best way to handle CSS will be in a child theme. So if you have a site and you want to style some things globally like headlines um, or your you know, paragraphs or whatever, do it inside of your child theme don't do it on the page. So I could, if I wanted to, click on this paragraph, turn off the default typography settings. And while this paragraph selected, I could click on advanced, go down to custom CSS. So this is one way. Now, if I want to target the item that I have selected, I type selector and then put in some styling. So I, whatever, color green, you can see you know, that changes the color. I could change the font size. I recommend, recommend using, you know, relative font sizing so it can scale. Um, so I could, I could do this, right? Uh, another way would be I can actually select something like this paragraph and on the advanced tab, I can give it a class or an ID. Um, so it's, it's a good idea, even though you're an elementor, if you're working on a larger site, especially at an organization where you need some sort of governance, um, go ahead and get in the habit of naming things intuitively, right? Even including sections, you know, like this container here. Like, and if you have, if you, use, if you right click and turn on navigator, it's a good idea also to get, oops, to get in the habit of naming things in navigator, so. This is some sort of a fancy about section, so about, about feature or something, I don't know, right? Like get in the habit of naming things and not only naming them, try to get in the habit of clicking on, like I'm clicking on the container here, going to advanced and I'm gonna add a class to it. So I might call this something like about feature. And you'll have to, come up with you know yourself or with your team, whatever naming conventions you want, but you definitely want to be specific. And you can certainly adopt things like, um, oh gosh, um, there's different sort of approaches for best practices for, for using naming. Um, a lot of people like to use that sort of like atoms and molecules type approach. Um, so whatever works for you. Um, so it's a good idea to go through and do that. So then if I go, I'm gonna turn off navigator. And I give this paragraph a class for just for this, we'll call it demo paragraph. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go down to this next paragraph, clear out the styling. If I don't clear out the styling, the class may not work. And then I'll give it a the same class. So now 
This can get confusing. I can click on anything. I can click on the container, go to advanced, start typing in custom CSS, right? And I could use the class I just came up with and I could say color red. So now you can see, okay, that's a little more powerful. I can target more than one at a time as opposed to using the selector option. And I don't recommend leaving CSS here in, play, in this custom CSS. No one's ever gonna find it. It's really <laughs> confusing. If you do use this, then at least have let people know like your conventions, like, hey, if we ever custom style anything inside Elementor, we'll always do it on that element, right? Because like now I click out of that and I'm thinking, oh gee, which, which element did I put that CSS? If I go here, oh, it's not there. Well, how in the world is this text red, right? Oh, okay, it was here. So here's a trick I came up with. Um, if you don't have the ability to access the child theme or if you have multiple people working on a project, say you're part of a big organization, maybe IT controls the master style sheet and you're just responsible for building a landing page. You really need to write some CSS, but you're not sure the best way to do it. I've come up with what I think works really well and I've tried this with a couple organizations. There's a widget called, I believe, H yeah, HTML. What I'll do is I'll drop this widget. I'll what I tend to do is just make a new section like that, and I'll just zero out all the properties, margin and padding. I'll click on the column. This is just so it doesn't show in the page. Then I'll go get the HTML widget, drop it in here. Now what's cool is we can put in HTML code, which means we can put in style. So what I like to do, if I'm being hired and, and I just need to kind of do my own thing with CSS, what's kind of nice, I can put my styles in here. And let me go get, okay, did I clear that out? See, now I'm confused. So now it's cool because I know where my CSS is. I'm always gonna put it in this script widget. So let's see, what was my class demo paragraph? So now if I wanna make all that text red, whoops, wrong button, color, red, same thing, it works, right? And it actually kind of supports syntax highlighting, so you have a clue if you make a mistake. If I do something like use a scorched earth technique, hmm, well, maybe not. It, I've seen it, I've seen it throw up little warnings here, you know, like the, basically warning like that's not best practice. But anyway, what's nice about this is now I know where my, my CSS for the page is. It's here. If I preview, it doesn't actually show. I can actually put, let's see, I've got kids growling upstairs. Um, it's very distracting. I could put comments in here, right? So I could let people know, you know what my thinking was behind one of these wanted to make text red. So then the next person who comes in understands, whoops, what I was thinking. I could even put comments in here. This code, this code created by King Grizzly. And then like contact Brian if blah, 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 right? You could, you could actually comment that. And then uh, one other option, which is really powerful, what if you have to work on three or four or five pages? You can, you can actually save this uh, as a template, or you can just save the actual widget as a global widget. So I could save this as a global widget, drop it into any page that I want to use it on, and then if I edit this on any of those pages, save it and refresh, all the other pages should get the update. I, I feel like that's a great way to do things. Even when you're developing your own site or you're not maybe in the context of a team, you can do this just for speed if you don't wanna be going to FTP or, or terminal or whatever to mess with your CSS. And then once you've kind of got the styling how you want it, you can come in here, you know, copy your styling and go drop it in your child theme and then delete these out. So those are some good ways to handle CSS, I think inside of Elementor. One final thing worth noting uh, regarding CSS with Elementor. Occasionally I've noticed a site won't look right. Um, so I, I make some updates, I install a plugin, I fiddle with some CSS, the site doesn't seem right. Or If you go to Elementor and then settings, and you kind of click around in here, there's an advanced tab. 
Pups, what am I looking for? No, tools. You go to tools. Look at this. There's a regenerate CSS option. Style set and elementary are saved in CSS files in the uploads folder. Recreate those according to the most recent thing. So if you're ever noticing that your site doesn't look right and you just can't figure out why, one thing to try is to just regenerate the CSS files. So you click on this and it just regenerates them. I think it actually minimizes them too. Good thing to know, because I had a site the other day where the, the nav just didn't look right. And I, I couldn't figure out why. I came in here and I clicked on this and it regenerated the CSS and fixed everything. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Again, a quick recap. You can click on anything, go to advanced, go to custom CSS, type in CSS, but I recommend put in the HTML widget, put your CSS inside of that. If you need it on more than one page, you can save it as a global widget. And when you save a global widget, it'll show up under this tab here. I don't have any on this site, but I'll go ahead and save it so you can see. So save as global, call this something like CSS. Oh, look at that, CSS styles, King Grizzly, sure. Save. If I go to, now we see we have this here, I could drag it in. And I actually, I would wanna do that on any new pages. So hopefully this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.